As a Howard County resident, I never realized all that this great county has to offer. Its contributions to the state of Maryland and to this country are well documented. Did you know that in 1806, Congress approved the National Road Act? This act regulates the laying out and making of a road from Cumberland, Maryland to Ohio. As the first federally funded road, the historic National Road provided a gateway to the West for thousands of settlers who followed it from Baltimore to Illinois. The road's history traces the evolution of transportation and commemorates the movement that ultimately stretched the nation's boundaries from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Today, the historic National Road is 824 miles and runs through six states, Maryland, West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and Missouri. This has been a joint venture between Howard County Tourism, the Maryland Department of Planning, Maryland Department of Tourism, and residents who live along the road. Well, my involvement is, is the Dep Maryland Department of Tourism is, um, is charged with developing product and creating opportunities for tourists to come to the state. And the National Road, certainly, and that gaining its all-American all road status is a really important opportunity for us to develop product and map and guide and opportunities for visitors to tour the state along the, the all-American road. In 2002, the historic National Road was designated as an all-American road by the Secretary of Transportation. As an all-American road, it's now part of America's byways and has been documented as having significant value to this country. With this new status, the preservation of the road and its history has been a top priority. You have these gorgeous towns, but there's everything that was going, around, going on seemed to be happening around them. Um, and the downtowns were suffering. Um, a lot of businesses closed up, a lot of storefronts vacant. Um, which is, a, which is a national phenomenon, but all along the routes was very much in evidence. Um, and as a member of the Department of Planning, it was part of my job to figure out economic development strategies that would revitalize these towns. For Howard County Tourism, the renewed interest in the road will bring travelers from both near and far to the county. Well, uh, the historic National Road is uh, an attractive product to persons that have an interest in history. Uh, and when they've done the studies on persons that have an interest in history, when they travel, they spend more time and they spend more money at a variety of different attractions. So the historic National Road, which begins over in Baltimore, could certainly draw historical travelers out from an urban area to our small towns, our farms, and places they may not see if they were simply on the highways. Along Howard County's stretch of the National Road, visitors will learn about the early railroad system, the Patapsco River Valley, the first travelers on the road, and so much more from the six interpretive markers that have been placed throughout the county. I wanted to be involved in the history, presenting the history of our town. So I started with Poplar Springs, and I volunteered to write the history and produce the pictures. Um, from the various residents who gave them to me and uh, put it together and send it into the state. 67 interpretive markers are now strategically placed along the National Road. I visited the Howard County Tourism Office and picked up my map and guide. Now I'm on the go to Howard County's portion of the historic National Road. <laughs> My first stop is the B&O Railroad Museum, located on Main Street in Ellicott City. Here you'll learn about the great rivalry between the road and the railroad. Prior to the railroad in the early 1800s, a trip to Cumberland on the National Road cost $9 and was a 20-hour trip. The same trip on the B&O Railroad cost $7 and took only 10 hours. While the National Road was the main hub of transportation for the first few decades of the 1800s, the railroads would later contribute to its demise because more and more people began using the railroad as their main source of transportation. 
As I continue on Main Street, I come across the next Howard County marker on the National Road, and it's located at the Thomas Isaac Log Cabin. At this site, you'll learn all about the roads the Ellicott brothers built. As successful businessmen, Andrew, Joseph, and John initiated a road expansion that would run west to Doregan Manor, home of Charles Carroll, a signer of the Declaration of Independence. By the late 1700s, Andrew's son Jonathan got into the act. Jonathan oversaw the extension of a road to Frederick. This road would later become the Frederick Turnpike. The Frederick Turnpike, along with a system of roads built by the Ellicotts, was instrumental in the 1806 congressional decision to build the first federally funded road west from Cumberland, now called the Historic National Road. On Frederick Road in West Friendship lies the marker that tells the story of how goods and services were transported on the National Road. By the mid-1830s, Western farmers were shipping their goods and crops to Baltimore on the National Road. As goods traveled east to Baltimore, they increased the productivity of the Port of Baltimore and helped local merchants to reach a world market. Today, local merchants still reap the rewards of being located on the National Road. It's about the historic significance, the, uh, uh, how important it is to the community in general. And so uh, that was really what attracted me to, to, to purchase the business was the fact that it was here in the historic district and that uh, there was a lot more going on besides just you know, just the business aspects itself. So it really is a, a community, you know, all the business owners get along uh, pretty well. We all know each other and we all look out for each other. So um, I just think I got, get that a lot more here than I would have gotten any other retail location. Longtime residents along the road have always had an appreciation for its history and its culture. Well, we think the National Road is just a great place to live next to. It's, we call it Route 40, the old Route 40. But I was born here 73 years ago, been on the road that long, and remember watching the Army trucks go up and down during the Second World War. This was the main route going through Ellicott City into Baltimore and down to Fort Meade also. And uh, it's an area that even the people that used horses in those days looked at those milestones and they knew each mile they had gone. And in earlier days, they actually replaced the horses occasionally for rest. My next stop on the National Road is very significant to the history of African Americans in this country. An interpretive marker titled Creating a Unified Community of Strength can be found at both the Simpson and Mount Gregory United Methodist Churches. At these sites, you'll learn how Methodist churches were a great source of inspiration for up-and-coming African-American communities as they moved westward along Baltimore and the Fredericktown Turnpike. Simpson Poplar Springs, or the Mother Church as it was fondly called, was developed on a farm donated to a black sharecropper in 1893. This one-room church served only a little more than 12 parishioners who lived in a small black neighborhood of Schaefersville. Today, Schaefersville is part of Mount Airy in Howard County. Mount Gregory United Methodist Church began its services in 1898 in the lower level of the Warfield Academy. The original old stone building was deeded for the sole purpose of educating black children in nearby Cooksville. After a fire destroyed the original building in 1922, the current structure, which was built in 1927, continued to educate blacks. The church also provided leaders for the African-American community. The United Methodist Women and the United Methodist Men organizations were crucial to black society after the Civil War. They provided reading programs, aid to the disabled, and meals to the needy. As I continue my journey along the National Road, my travels take me to New Lisbon. Back in 1802, a Quaker named Caleb Pancoast established New Lisbon. The entrepreneur saw both a need and opportunity to service travelers along the length of the National Pike. Many of you know this town as just Lisbon. The name was shortened in 1805. The marker located at Frederick Road and Church Alley by the Lisbon Elementary School tells the story of how merchants provided dining and lodging services to travelers as they stopped along the National Pike. All religious denominations were welcomed into Pancoast's home, and he even allowed it to be used as a meeting house. 
By 1835, the town of Lisbon thrived. Stagecoaches made daily stops at the old stagecoach house, where trading took place and lodging was provided. Today, Caleb Pantos' house and the stagecoach house no longer exist. However, just across the road to your left is a two-story brick home. This brick home, located along the pike, also has historical significance in providing services to early travelers along the road. My last stop on this portion of the historic National Road takes me to Poplar Springs. The marker in this farm town tells the story of drovers and drivers. In the early 1800s, an endless parade of drovers drove their cattle, sheep, and freight wagons along the National Road. After the turn of the century, automobiles became a popular way of transportation. To accommodate the increased traffic through the town, Poplar Springs built a tourist facility in 1920. This facility featured dining with live entertainment and three tourist cabins. I've just showed you a taste of Howard County's portion of the historic National Road. As you travel down this road, a road that so many traveled years ago, you will learn some wonderful things about the history of the county. So, get a few family members or a few friends and set out on a journey to discover Howard County on the historic National Road.